seems that whenever the topic of Columbia comes up, it's always the same questions about safety, questions about the girls, and questions about earthquakes. I get it all the time. Aren't you afraid of the earthquakes? No, I did my due diligence and I checked out the issue about earthquakes a long time ago. There's various studies and some of them conflict, but essentially the historical data points to a cycle of earthquakes in this area, on this fault line, about once every 4,000 years. That's of a magnitude of six or greater. Whatever the history is, it doesn't really matter because we don't know what tomorrow will be, but this video will attempt to put this into some perspective. Why is this coming up now? Well, let me read to you a recent post from Sin Nombre, that means without a name. I'm not trying to be a troublemaker or a troll, but I hope all you folks realize Armenia is an earthquake hotspot with three tectonic plates converge, major earthquakes are expected every 20 years or so, and some say this is the reason the indigenous didn't inhabit that valley as much as others. Oh, Canada here, Vancouver. Now, I don't see this as being a troll, but it is misinformation. You know, I believe that he's sincere in what he's posting, and I know for a fact that you probably read that 20-year deal because there's a report that floats around the Internet. It's been discredited, but it says every 20 years or so. In fact, let's take a look at that report as it applies to Armenia, or Kandio for that matter. Let me read to you from that report. In Armenia, the panorama of the last 100 years is quite clear. It can be observed that earthquakes within 10 cities equal to or greater than 7 have a reoccurrence of about 20 years. There's a return period between 12 and 13 years for events with intensities equal to or greater than 6. Can also be observed that with the reoccurrence at least 5 years, earthquakes that may cause important damage have struck, will probably strike the region. You could get lost forever in a sea of statistics and charts. Uh, I, I almost did. I've simplified it with the most pertinent information to give you some perspective. This is a chart on significant earthquakes in Colombia recorded since 1644. You'll see on that chart that Armenia, in fact, Candio, do not even appear. The earthquake people seemed to fear was the one that hit in 1999. After I finish this overview, I'll show you why there's nothing to worry about. Colombia is located on the famed Ring of Fire, as is the western United States, Mexico, Alaska, and actually the entire west portion of South America. A number of fault lines come into play. In addition, the Andes Mountains still have activity occurring that form these mountains over millions of years. In Colombia, there are partly large earthquakes with strengths of more than 7.0, which cause damage within a radius of over 100 kilometers. Measured by the size of the country, earthquakes occur rather rarely. Another bit of confusion comes from some people confusing Armenia, Colombia with Armenia, the country. There have been some major earthquakes in that country. But because they had one in 1988, Armenia, Colombia had one in 1999, but they're not connected in any way. Let's take a look at the 1999 Armenia, Colombia earthquake. This was actually a quake centered around south of Armenia and had effect all over Candio. The primary damage that occurred in the south part of the city and loss of life in Candio was nearly 1,200 people. There's a small fault line that runs through Armenia called the Armenia Fault Line. You'll notice it runs primarily across the divide of Armenia of the north and the south. This image is actually a sideway view of it. Let me turn it upright. I'm taking this information from the Candillo, Columbia earthquake of 25 January 1999 by the Earthquake Engineering Field Investigative Team 
for the Institution of Structural Engineers, London. In Armenia itself, there were about 175 buildings destroyed. 65% of the city's structures were destroyed or damaged beyond repair. It was similar in Kalarka next door, which was the second most damaged city. This type of earthquake damage was not a total surprise. Columbia began to pay attention to earthquakes in California in the 70s and also began to apply that information here. There were some standards created in a design code that passed in 1984. The issue was most of the structures dated prior to these code. Much of the population of that time was very poor. They lived in non-engineered buildings. Any buildings designed with the new codes actually performed quite well. In fact, of all of those, only one failed, and that was determined it was quality issues by the contractor. Those buildings ranged from two stories up to 15 stories. You will see in this chart that the damage and deaths was spread throughout Candillo. La Tabaida was also hit particularly hard. You can see in this chart that the strength of the earthquake was not so great. In fact, you'll note that there were 21 earthquakes out of 32 since 1961 that were much stronger. The reason the 1999 earthquake in Armenia is of particular note is that the loss of life and property damage was due to a primary factor, lousy building methods. Columbia had already been concerned with some inadequacies of the 1984 standards and rewrote them in 1998, the year before the big one. Of the four type of buildings in Armenia, two types did extremely well. There was a re-engineer of traditional bamboo structures up to three stories that had been created to test some new theories. These all survived. The ones that fared the worst were the ancient designs. These, however, failed as a result of new shortcuts. In other words, things like adding heavy steel roof panels with no de redesign of supports caused collapse. The other group that did great was, as mentioned, the taller buildings built to earthquake standards. Today, Armenia is full of tall buildings and all are built to standards beyond the 1984 and 1998 codes. If another earthquake hit Armenia today of the same location and strength, there would be very little damage. I would also point out the comment, traditional knowledge must not be discarded. Starting in the 19th century, local traditions in bamboo construction have withstood the test of time. The last thing to note in this person's comment was that indigenous tribes didn't inhabit the valley as much as others. With all due respect to the polite commenter, this is total rubbish. While some tribes actually vanished, it had nothing to do with earthquakes, and today there are a number of tribes that still exist here, and in fact, has a great portion of Colombia's original groups here in Candillo. I know this commenter was sincere, respectful, and meant well, but this points to the problem of partial information. Many things require far more than a superficial reading of online information. More than one source should also be considered. After a major event, many people of the day will jump out with papers and articles of speculation and guesses. If you get your hands on that, you end up with faulty information. If you remain concerned, feel free to download the PDF file link in the comment section below. I did not choose Columbia lightly and took these issues into consideration. The more you study, the more relaxed you're going to feel. Yes, earthquakes can be felt to some extent all over Colombia, or even all over South America on a routine basis. Yet, I live in an area that while there was an earthquake, today it would have been something to talk about over coffee instead of the disaster it was in the past. Also consider if you look into where you may live, you will likely find hundreds of earthquakes happening you never noticed before. I sincerely hope this helps put your mind at ease, not only for Armenia and Colombia, but many other places you might consider. Now. Should we talk about volcanoes?